Hello, my name is Ralph Friedrichs. I'm an addiction recovery coach and the host of the Take Your Life Back Today show. As an addiction recovery coach, I'm going to share something with you. Let me be crystal clear to leave an everlasting impact upon you. Imagine, just imagine being buried alive. You're in a coffin, but you know you're not dead. You don't know how to get out of the coffin. You try lifting the lid, but the enormous weight upon the lid prevents you from opening the lid. You then try banging on the lid to unsettle the dirt. Maybe somebody on top will notice and start digging their way down towards you. This is what it's like to find yourself at the lowest point of alcohol and drug addiction. You know you need help. You know you can't do it on your own, but you don't know where to turn. You just think you're going to die. Usually, though, people don't think about death when they're habitually abusing drugs and alcohol. In order to feed an addiction, you have to be great at repressing the fear of death. I often ask you, my audience, did it ever cross your mind that while you are abusing drugs and alcohol, you might overdose? You might take something away that God gave you. And if that's not selfish enough, you're taking it away from your mother, your father, your husband, your wife, your children, your grandchildren. Your life is being taken away because you didn't cry for help like this person didn't. Call me at 844-405-HELP and I promise you I'll help you take your life back for your life is gone. People like Larry, guys from the Geist Academy at 516-458-2741, 516-458-2741. Larry Geist and I tell folks like you it doesn't matter where you've been, it doesn't matter where you came from. What matters most is that you're here looking for a good today and a better tomorrow. Larry Geist has over 30 years experience helping people go from addiction to recovery, from low self-esteem to improving their self-esteem, from depression to happier times. You can find Larry at www.odysseyconsultant.org. Larry Geist from the Geist Academy, 516-458-2741. When you take your slippers off before you jump into bed tonight, don't just put them by the edge of your bed. Stick them all the way under your bed. In the morning, when you wake up, drop down to your knees to go and get those slippers there under your bed. While you're on your knees, thank God for another beautiful day that He is allowing you to live. That's right, somebody didn't wake up. Thank God for the clothing you have, the food, the home, the family. Ask God for guidance and direction. Ask God for mercy and forgiveness. Tell God how wonderful it is to be alive and change the world in your own little way. Your time alone with God should be every single day, one time at least. And what better way to do it than what I call knee mail, K-N-E-E mail, that's on your knees to get your slippers. From your lips to God's ears, every single morning, tell God how much you appreciate being alive, to see streams and waterfalls like behind me. That should be happening each and every day. After that, put your slippers on, show, uh, roll your shoulders back, stick your chest out, and walk with God 24-7. We're going to talk about 10 ways to make you closer, and that's right, you closer to your family. And I have a quote that I want to actually read, so let me read that. Failure is unavoidable in our lives, but uh, if I can learn something from it every single day, the chance of success will only increase. How close is your family to you folks? One of the biggest challenges, if not the biggest challenge facing the U.S. today is the breakdown of traditional family union unit, which we're going to talk about later. I have Gloria Jean Roberts calling in and she will be talking to me about traditions. We're going to compare some of our little stories. But to today, nearly four out of ten first marriages end in divorce. Sixty percent of divorcing couples have children and over one million children each year experience the divorce of their parents. I'm no relationship expert, far from it, but my belief is that if there are more couples agreed on and lived by a set of meaningful family values and those values were alive in their home, the above divorce statistics would go down and families would be closer. As a man who takes my role as a father and uh, grandfather and leader of my family very seriously, it is my responsibility to create a culture that inspires respect, love, trust, togetherness, and most importantly, fun. I'm kidding about that, but it is, it is important. If you want your family to be close, you must make it your responsibility as well. Here are 10 ways to make your family closer. Number one is be the leader of your family. If you have a family, whether you recognize it or not, you are a leader. It doesn't matter if you are a woman or a man, mother or father, you are a leader. If you have a partner, you are a co-leading. And if you are a single parent, you are the sole leader. 
when I was uh, uh, um, uh, coaching, uh, life coaching, uh, we would frequently remind our clients that leaders have three things, vision, action, and spirit. In other words, you know where you're going and why you're going there. You are committed and taking the appropriate action to get there, and you are doing it with spirit that inspires others to be their best. Your first step in leading your family might be to take a good look at yourself in the mirror and honestly acknowledge what kind of leader your family deserves. What kind of partner does your significant other deserve? What kind of parent do your children deserve? What type of life do you deserve? As the leader of your family, you cannot leave the future up to chance. You must lead. The people around you are depending on you to do so. So please start today. Number... Two, establish values. As stated above, I think one of the biggest challenges facing our culture today is the lack of individual understanding and personal values, which results in a lack of family values. Part of the good look at yourself in the mirror routine that I talked about above is admitting to yourself what truly is important and meaningful to you. What type of person do you want to be and what type of person do you need to be to have the life you deserve to have? As an example, here are my personal values that I do try to live by each and every day. Live with a meaning by knowing what is important and letting that direct my life. Provide value to the people around me. Live with integrity by walking my talk and good health in foundation of everything mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. In relation to your own family, that is truly important to you and most importantly is to walk with God each and every day. So what type of family do you want to be? What type of family do you need to, uh, to be to live the lives of everyone in your family deserves to live? As an example, here are the value or rules of my family in order of priority. Respect, self-respect and respect for others. Family first, for myself, my career, for my children, school, other commitments, being social and fun. My personal values are the rules that I live by and my fam family values are the rules that my family lives by. In a demanding, distracting, and overstimulating world, our special and family values help us keep focus on things that are truly important and meaningful to all of us. The more you do uh, and uh, the more you are able to focus on things that are truly important to you, the more meaningful and fulfilling your lives will be. As the leader, you have the power to make this happen. Traditions need to continue. Number three is create a culture for your home. As the leader of your family, when you establish your family values, you have just taken the first step in creating the culture of your home. Your home culture is the spirit that lives in your home. These are cultures that not only uh, live in your family home, but these are traditions that need to be carried on year after year, generation after generation. For me, above everything else, the spirit I try most tenderly about in my home is the spirit of respect, love, and togetherness. That can, uh, should be considered a tradition to be passed down from generation to generation. Number four is to be present. Your role as a leader of your home is an active role, not a passive role. The only way to create and sustain a home structure base is meaningful values is for you as the leader to make sure that they are living according to those values. Again, this is a tradition that should be passed on from generation to generation. And then number five is live by example. Uh, Gloria and I spoke about this when we spoke about respecting elders in the spirit uh, of it all starts with you. Everything that your children see you do, they will copycat. and They will take it into their lives. So if you're going to drink and hit and curse, expect your children to do that. Traditions have bad traditions and good traditions. This would be a bad tradition if you lead by an example of destruction, lack of respect, lack of love, and lack of compassion. Number six, control your schedule. As a leader of your family, you must control your schedule or it will control you. A lot of people seem to be really, really busy. When they are too busy and stressed, it's like a badge they want to present to the world that makes people know they are busy. Part of traditions is to do take vacations together each and every year as a family together. Uh, Gloria, when she calls in later, her and I will talk about traditions, and uh, I hope you stay with us for that.
But people are too busy because they don't control their schedule and they allow less important people and things to distract them. Don't let that happen to you. Don't let that become a bad tradition from year to year, generation to generation. The next one is plan with purpose. A few years ago, a mentor of mine said to me, you can tell a lot about what is important to a person by looking at their checkbook and their calendar. If you know what your personal and family values are, it is easy to plan with purpose because you know what, uh, what is purposeful. Are you intentionally about where you want to be spending your energy, time, and money? Plan with a purpose. Plan vacations. Plan on traditional yearly things with your family year after year, generation after generation. You need, number eight is hold accountability. What I don't want to get lost in is this, is that life gets busy. I have a full-time career. Um, I, I, I'm a host and a director and a producer. Um, I take care of at least nine websites, but I am accountable for my family and their actions. And as the leader of your family, you must first hold yourself accountable that you are focused on the right things, not the wrong things. Websites, host, producing, directing are second seat to being a father and a husband and a grandfather. That is a tradition. That is a value to hand down to your children and your grandchildren. So um, that is a good tradition that you want to hand down. And you got to make sure you stick with that one. Uh, because holding others accountable is not always asked for or it's popular, but it's necessary. I want you to teach your children, your grandchildren, that they are accountable. And remind, number nine is to remind often. If the spirit of your home embodies your family values, reminders will happen automatically. Now, reminders must might feel like accountability, but they are two different things. Accountability is more of a reaction to a situation, and reminding awfully is simply being proactive. So if you things that are uh, traditions are not being followed year after year, remind of the previous year, remind of how your parents raised you and how you want to raise your children, it's, uh, and down to your grandchildren. Good traditions, good values are the core foundation of your family. And then number 10 is have fun. Imagine a world where everything you do, meaningful and, f and fulfilling, wouldn't be fun. As a leader of your family, can you think of anything more fulfilling than your family being closer, both emotionally and physically? I don't know about you, but I want to have as much fun in my family as possible. When we aren't together, I want to be able to feel proud that I'm doing everything I can to ensure my family is having fun and, and uh, are happy and healthy. So in my absence, I want to make sure that they're provided for. We are, when we do get together, our fun and enjoyment will be maximized because respect, love, togetherness are important to everyone. And that, my friend, is the foundation of your family and the foundation of your home. Your family being close to a decision that you, uh, is a decision that you, the leader, has to make. It doesn't just happen. The world will eat you up and spit you out if you let it. And a lot of people will let it happen. Be different and make a decision for your family to be close and take action to make that happen. Keep traditions going. If it is important to you, I promise it will be the most important, meaningful, and fulfilling decision you ever made. Be the leader of your family. Be the leader that your family needs and deserves and carry your traditions from your mother and your father and your grandparents to this generation, which is you, and then bring it to your next generation, which is your children, and following to the grandchildren. Uh, we're going to take a short break, and when I come back, we're going to have a uh, phone host, a regular on our show, Gloria Jean Roberts, will be calling in, and we'll talk about traditions. I'll talk to you in a few.